Good evening, everybody. It's good to see a full house. And um, I'm very happy to welcome Miyu Tsuneyama from <laughs> Tokyo, who just arrived yesterday, who is a little bit tired today. But um, the good thing is that she can stay a little bit longer because she is also very well connected to Switzerland. She will talk to on urban fungus. Architecture is a complex mesh, which is part of the um, series on positions on urbanism, which we continue from last semester because we thought it's still important to take to talk about and to, to discuss on contemporary issues on our design issues to solve the challenges which we have to face on our built environment. So you will do the first introductory lecture. You um, have been educated in, on the Tokyo University. Of science. Of science. <laughs> uh, but you graduated at the EPFL in, in Lausanne. And then you have been working in Switzerland in two different offices in Geneva and in Basel. You returned to Tokyo to, um, as a lecturer guest lecturer at the Tokyo University of Science. Yes. Then you returned <laughs> back you. to Switzerland <laughs> <laughs> to, to teach at the EPFL. Last year. Yeah. And then you returned again to Tokyo yes. <laughs> to buy a house okay. with your partner. Um, a little bit outside of Tokyo, which I'm very looking forward to hear more about. It's called a hall in the house, which is a kind of ongoing project. It's a construction place but you live there also at the same time with your little family. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very much looking forward to this presentation and also to um, discuss later with you. You are also welcome to buy a first publication later after the lecture. It's for 30 francs. There are only 10 copies and it's the first um, book actually um, ha published. Yeah, here in Swiss it's not even published in Switzerland, no? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> From so May. You will be the first so one. I brought 10 copies for you. <laughs> so thank you, Heike, for the introduction and thank you for having me uh, tonight. And I have a very little voice. So <laughs> if you can't hear me, just tell me. And probably you squeeze more. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm, um, to the, tonight I'm talking about urban fungus, uh, which is a bit strange name. Uh, I'm going to explain at the end. But um, I'm not sure if I can respond directly to the lecture title of Position on Urbanisms. But of course, we are living in the city, urban situation, which is also like makes us questioning all the time. So today I talk about the situation, especially in Tokyo, which is probably very different from here. So like first of all, like I explain like this mesh, <laughs> complex mesh. So buildings are made of networks of various materials from raw materials to disposal. Human skills and the knowledge are its important actors as well as the work of microorganisms in the soil. This network forms a mesh with buildings as a temporary node. And we view the architecture as this complex mesh, just like a mushroom which <laughs> with its head above the ground has a spread network of mycelium, its main body. However, industrialization has blo black box the network of materials. Architects can open up the black boxes, break down the barrier of institutions and the conventions. And label the grid of forced alignment and thereby reconnecting networks into an ecology of multi-species. This creates a habitat of multi-species where human and non-human entangle. So after World War II, the population growth led to massive global uh, urbanizations. A side effect of this urbanization has been the ubiquity of a lifestyle defined by mass production, consumption, and disposal. 
Tokyo is no exception to the, this phenomenon and it's known for the accelerated development. It's now started to deteriorate. So since 2004, Japan's population has started to decline, creating an increase uh, in the number of vacant houses throughout the city. The culture of scrap and build cannot be sustainable, thereby necessitating a change. Japan has no, now been moving towards the use of existing building stock in its architecture. So in center in Tokyo, where significant capital investment are made, new goods and the services, secure infrastructure, and the clean spaces and the consti constantly maintained. And conversely, the urban periphery as home is home to, to a dense population living in detached houses and small apartments. The deteriorating economic situation and ongoing aging uh, population have left this area looking worn and decaying. So it's as through brand new cities and the expired city coexist. Due to energy and the food shortage resulting from the war in Ukraine, rapidly rising commodity prices and the economic strain caused by the COVID-19 pan pandemic, more and more capital is being concentrated in certain areas of the world cities while others are being neglected. So in inspired, expired cities, there is insufficient economic capacity to keep building and the infrastructure updated, yet life persists. So in expired city, expired city um, waste is converted into resources and used to make small updates. The process of recycling be begins for, for example, from unoccupied building or old shops, fronts, or neglected gardens. Or our architectural approach begins with resor resourcefulness. We aim to create livable spaces using what was once considered waste, decaying vacant, vacant houses, solar energy, and soil microorganisms. It is like how fun fungi glows on the expired food as nutrient. So this is a hose in the house. It's my, <laughs> me and the husband home and office. The original four storage steel structure was 30 years old when we bought it. We moved after making a hole in each floor and dismantled interiors and are innovating in step wisely while living in. And the house located in Nishioi, where it takes uh, only five minutes to the center by train, has not been developed due to the complex topography on the edge of the plateau. Shinkansen and, and the local train that closed the area generating loud noises. The area is mainly le residential, but since it's Nikon, like Camilla's uh, hometown, small factories and used to be settled, which now tend to be constructed in housing without lack of green spaces. So the yellow house is our house. It's popping up. <laughs> so therefore, Nishioi is the cheapest land in Nishinaga world. Tokyo, so south part of Tokyo. And we bought this yellow house, which has uh, two shutters um, on the ground floor, and we dismantled the shutter and we moved in. So we lived uh, without windows for a year. So cold air, warm air coming in, as well as kakaloche and mosquito too. <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> Also, this hole on the, uh, each slab brings the light from the top floor because it's quite, quite a dense situation. So downstairs it's very dark and also generate the air circulation too. 
and we moved in in the states like this, like all the cable were hanging and also like a lot of the finishing of the floor and rock wool were exposed and the holes, <laughs> it's very rough. And also like uh, ALC panels, which is like uh, the outside skins is directly exposed. And the ground floor has no windows and has a little uh, holes uh, to connect to the top floors. And we, it's, you know, it used to be storage, but it's uh, renovated to the rooms afterwards. So we kept only the structure for the, um, the floors. And we started to renovate little by little, painting uh, with white uh, paintings uh, to uh, coat the rock wool, which was fluffy and falling down. Also, we, uh, we insulated uh, the floor because there was no insulation of this house. And creating like a better condition for us, but also like we wanted to make reducing um, the load of the planet too. So the advantage of <laughs> living and uh, renovating at the same time is like uh, censoring your, uh, the situation with your body. So this bay window was very cold. So we insulated with polycarbonate panel and checked with the video how <laughs> much influenced and it's very, very cold. Without, it looks like without a window, but behind there is a glass. Um, and also, uh, if you connect to the energy around the site, which is the sun, also like the stockable energy as a wood chip uh, for the pellet stove, it started to deconstruct the kitchen because we can cook on the rooftop with the solar cooker, making cookies, or in the office with the pellet stove, uh, the stew. And also we, st we used uh, reusing waste materials, um, which is from the museum. One to one model of very famous Professor Seike's uh, house. And after three months of exhibition, they dismantle it and they meant to be um, uh, the big garbage because it's national museum, so they can't give to anyone. So we collected from the garbage deposit, uh, all the material, which is a good cedar and the uh, Japanese hinoki, and we installed in our office. So like unexpectedly, uh, it became a big lodge like uh, the office. So it's cladded all wood. And we uh, started to also aware um, soil environment uh, issues, which is like urban uh, area is most of the surface is covered with asphalt and the concrete. So we tried to demolish the concrete surface of our parking spot and uh, regenerate uh, with the organic matters by ourselves. So we had the one tool, so every day two hours, because after two hours it's shaking your arm. Uh, it took like almost three months. So because we didn't do it every day also. And it has so, so loud, so we had the box to kind of insulate the noise too. And it was unfortunately good concrete, so it was very hard. <laughs> and also we brought to the um, kind of uh, con <laughs> oh, sorry, concrete depot, uh, which was like shocking um, sight. All the like immigrant works and the piled up the concrete. So we thought like why using concrete, which is very difficult to um, to recycle. And we started to make the gutter because it was covered for 30 years and it was dead soil. 
So that helps the water penetrate uh, slower. Otherwise, just the they go, they flow on the surface and it doesn't penetrate. And we put the bubble uh, charcoal and the humus to activate the microorganisms to someone, uh, somehow the, to make the better um, soils. And we put the nursery trees and also welcoming some earthworms. And every day we started to bring back our food waste too. Oh, sorry. So after three months, uh, two months later, uh, mycelium started to grow and also some weeds <laughs> started to grow. And after one year, it's like a full of life which is not beautiful because uh, like sweet potato is like a very invader, <laughs> invader because it grows from the food compost. Uh, but we really amazed at the power of the soil because like it was too, too, too this surface when it was concrete, but suddenly 3D in the air, also in the soil too. And we uh, also recognize that the food can, uh, food waste is not the waste, it's like a, a nutrient for the next food. So we started to grow the tomato and the carrot and also uh, some flowers. So this brought us like idea of like a soil friendly neighborhood. If we have like some spot which has a uh, you know, connection of the water, the mycelium can grow and connect and the cooling down the, during the summer and also like uh, uh, creating, purifying the water too. And also it's gonna be a surface of the production of the food and also oxygen. Too. And we can also reconsider like the, where the, the car goes, where the, the car doesn't go, so we can break the asphalt too. So our vision is like breaking down our <laughs> front alley. And if we change to the surface, like the space completely changes, like it's become like um, full of uh, life and also production and uh, um, also space for people to stay. And after this experience, like I started to recognize that um, because we also have uh, some construction and we started to bring also wood to the uh, soil and we recognize that the so uh, plywood doesn't go back to soil because it has a glue. And so we started to use like biodegradable materials, which is like wood fiber or just massive wood or cottons, which is also, uh, be even it becomes waste, it decomposes. So now it, uh, we changed a bit how to insulate and how to finish the space. So this is a comparison from the beginning and afterwards. And now child security is installed too. <laughs> the cotton net and the cotton ballast plate. So this is like our uh, kind of, how is a summary of our house. The house itself has a shape, but the shape of the architecture is much wider accumulation of all the small updates or small ideas uh, with soil environment and the connection to the energy and materials. So our innovation is still going on after seven years and we take coincidence resources such as the people, energy and waste which we can find around us into the design. And Urban Wild Ecology, we uh, put this subtitle of, the, uh, of this holes in the house. It's like kind of developed more afterwards. And this 
is like the phenomenon of top-down enforcement of a policy and institution to address environment issue, referred to uh, as a political ecology. On the other hand, urban wild ecology adopts a bricolage approach, making the best use of available resources. It is a practice rooted in our living spaces rather than wildness or orientalism. So urban wild e ecology forces on the disconnected part rather than trans transcend a uh, whole like a deep ecology. It uh, acknowledged that depth uh, is found in localized element rather than in a framework that encompasses the entire planet. We will approach architecture through a series of small scale realization. So the Earth has a two distinct metabolism system. I think you know cradle to cradle. So one is biosphere, so biological metabolism, a uh, circle of nature, and the technosphere, which is like a technological metabolism, which is oriented to recycling cycle. And this cradle cradle says uh, once it's producted, uh, makes product, it's assembled together but shouldn't be disturbed, uh, this cycle, each other. So it has to be separated cycle. But now there is a tendency of third cycle, which is called the generative design. So man's, man's recreating the nature with like a very um, strong force. Uh, for example, like, um, uh, climate change control uh, with the human technology or um, yeah, genetic modification is like this third cycle. And we are uh, trying to do like a fourth, ci fourth cycle with weak intervention like urban fungus uh, does. So like fungus eating like um, existing ex expired food. So um, this is like our vision of um, working in the planet. And next uh, uh, theme is urban waste. Um, in Japan, as you might know, like after the world, the world second, it's burned out. Oh, there is nothing uh, except some concrete uh, structure in the river. So 4.2 million household uh, has no, um, no house and also all the soldiers came back from the abroad. So we have a lack, uh, problem of lack of a uh, house. So that's why the housing industry, uh, industry quickly uh, developed. Um, so this is a black line is vacant number of vacant houses. And the red line is the number of households and dotted uh, red line is number of a house. So um, after the war, the war, it developed, uh, built a lot uh, quickly the uh, house. But the ones like uh, 65 to 68, um, it uh, covered everything, uh, all the household but the housing industry became too big and so many employees and the big company became, became stronger. So they didn't stop to build. So this is like creating a scrap and a build um, cycle. Why like a vacant house is increasing so much, they did, they still like building <laughs> the house. So uh, the, the cycle of the house is in Japan is like 27 years. So after one generation, they demolish. So this is like a, um, saving the urban waste as a vacant house uh, called the house for seven people. And this is the middle of the uh, infrastructure at the inside of the block 
surrounded by the middle rise buildings, which is fireproofed. Uh, we call it urban village this symptom of the, the house. So the small scale um, wooden structure is left in the middle of the plot. So this is also like, uh, connected to just the two meters alley. And this is original house. So urban waste abandoned single family house um, to new fam form of family. It's like shared living. And this is because uh, of the changement of the relationship of the inhabitants, we have to redefine the common space. So original state was like this, um, but when we demolished, we found the steel do doors in between the walls because it used to be a storage on the ground floor. And we just used and we painted this uh, steel uh, doors and abandoned the, the insulation. <laughs> And it became a living room and it's very flexible because of the size and we can use big or like separate with the curtains or like completely divide as a rooms and also connected to the alley too. So uh, for example, like this, we can use also as a yoga um, practice. And then on the second floor, and there is an original state, which is like a wooden structure, continuous room. Um, and we in inserted the, the bedrooms in the middle, uh, keeping the uh, original windows and reinforcing also a structure as a backbone of the, um, yeah, as a backbone. And because of we are using the like center of the pitched roof, we could have like loft in the room and also like uh, creating a, a bright uh, open common space spaces, which is uh, easily say hello in the morning, comparing like very dark um, corridors in the middle of the house. And also uh, keeping the original windows uh, is telling the story of the house, which once used to be the bathroom, toilet, and the kitchens. So there it creates also like attachment to the inhabitants to kind of keep this uh, building special. So it's also like this corridor is extension of the private room. And uh, there is an abundant balcony as well. And I covered it with a um, tent to create a second living room, which has more privacy. Um, yeah, <laughs> and with a light and has more, you can spend that uh, time with a pyjama while the living room on the ground floor is more public. But now it's, <laughs> it's more tend to uh, be laundry space, which is also nice. So the, the soil environment we recognize is uh, creating the interest uh, to us, like um, some materials back to soil. And we focused with this mycelium, so which is a uh, connection of the uh, roots and the microorganisms to exchange the nutrient from the big tree to nursery tree and also the exchanging the information too. So this is why uh, the nursery tree without uh, a lot of uh, light can grow because of this uh, exchange of the nutrient. Um, so we tried to <laughs> build this stool with mycelium materials for Oslo Architecture Triennale. It's called the Hidden Half World because there is a two pair 
and inside uh, one is in, in inside in the museum and the visitor can sit and the one is outside and we can't access but it's gonna be decomposed because of the weather and kind of um, facing to this phenomenon is recognized that what's happening um, underneath of the soil which we don't see every day so this is a quick video to show uh, sanitizing the plastic which is a bit critical because so many plastic we made and filling up the mycelium with uh, the substrate which is broke down and it has already mycelium inside we made it like 20 <laughs> pieces then it grows like after one one day it's growing the mycelium and when we unfold it, the uh, plastic uh, after three days it was full of mycelium and we had to dry um, it to not to stop growing mycelium and also some sun <laughs> yeah. and after three months of exhibition uh, it it, it, it didn't replace it to the uh, directory, the soil, so it's not uh, decomposed com uh, completely, but started to kind of break. And through this experience, like we really like this power of the soil. Uh, and we saw it very important for our life. And we got to know this comparison of uh, the soil environment with traditional construction method and the modern construction method. So modern construction method was also like uh, the concrete channel and the concrete foundation seals everything to kind of uh, kill the water channel uh, the, uh, underneath of the, the soil. Um, while uh, the traditional construction method with stone walls and uh, the natural uh, tunnel creates the healthy water channel to bring the oxygen to the microorganisms. So we asked like why we have to do the concrete uh, solid foundation which we always built with the stone foundation like before the modernized uh, time. And it became continuous, like a close uh, continuous footing. And now to stop the humidity from the soil, they do that kind of like a basan with the solid foundation. And also we got to know this like mycelium Millium uh, worked together with the, the roots and also like the piles, uh, carbonized the piles and reinforcing the, the structure. So um, with this methodology, we can't build very um, easily now in Japan because of the regulation. So we tried to do different way to coexist with soil environment and the buildings. So this piles and the pointed roof is on the shopping street and the tenant building with two stories with independent foundation with the uh, piles. And I explain a bit like the relation of the, the soil condition <coughs> of Japan. And the Tokyo is in Kanto uh, Plain, which is like the largest plain in, uh, to in Japan. Comparing Europe, we don't have a lot of plain, uh, plat uh, flat land. Um, we have four plate meeting together in the niche of the land, causes a lot of earthquake and also like volcanoes. <laughs> So we have a lot of disaster, but also it creates the topography which brings a lot of waters too. So this is a river. And the Kanto Plateau is uh, almost flat and the Tokyo is where the blue is. So it's a very, very low land. It's used to be wetland too. 
and surrounded also like Mount Fuji and some uh, mountains too. Because of the Mount Fuji, it's uh, covered with the ashes and uh, um, even like on the plateau, the um, so soil is not stable for as a stru structure. And the site of point, uh, this pi uh, point, uh, piles and the pointed roof, it's just the edge of this plateau uh, and the river. You see the river is like uh, green part and the blue point is the site. So we had to do like 14.5 uh, meter of the piles. Uh, so each three meter we welded and it, on the top there is a screw to, uh, when we have to take it off, we can turn it la uh, other way so that we can take it off. Um, yeah. And also we did soil uh, regeneration with bamboo and uh, bamboo charcoal and uh, organic matters to revive uh, the soil environment as a gutter of the roof. And now we try to kind of coexist with the soil and the building uh, in the city as well. Also bring back the rainwater to the soil too, which is like usually connected to the public uh, channel and bring back directly to the river. So this is the last um, project I show um, about the traditional ecological knowledge. So in modern times, the use of the concrete and the plastic has become common, allowing for easy shaping and the design. But um, when used the biodegradable materials, it's necessary to carefully consider how to protect the buildings form from the rain and the humidity. So this was a common practice in construction from earlier, um, earlier times. Modern architecture needs to learn from traditional ecological knowledge. So this is a comparison of a traditional uh, construction method and the conventional wooden construction method. So uh, which the traditional uh, has like uh, only, um, what I say, uh, this orthogonal structure, no diagonal structures, and also it uses massive wood because of the hand carving. Um, but uh, the conventional wooden structure has a very small wood, uh, using very small wood, and also reinforcing with the walls or like racing, um, and using the metal joint as well. So we try, with the student, we try to kind of exercise like how to build the traditional construction method uh, with small shed and using a stone foundation with carbonized piles to reinforce the, uh, the earth and also um, how is it, hand carving uh, joint for all the structures. So we didn't use any metal joint and also used the um, rice uh, straw to cover the, the roof. So students learned how to process like, uh, uh, learning from carpenter because since like a wooden structure, it was built with the community. So it's meant to be difficult, but it's not difficult if you train. <laughs> and also they uh, carbonize the piles by themselves. Also like reinforcing stone. Um, foundation with gravel and also a uh, bamboo charcoal. And this is like stone foundation which is placed and building the um, wood uh, structure by themselves. And now this is the state. <laughs> so since this was rice field, it's uh, very, uh, a lot of clay and the, the land it wasn't stable but uh, this reinforcement helps to grow the mycelium to reinforce the structure. 
So through this experience, um, we are very, how we say, um, fascinated how the traditional construction method works and has also the history of long term. So we tried to build the house with the traditional construction method. And this was the site which was slopey. And on the back, we had some um, kind of uh, dry masonry of the stones and uh, let the slope go because it's independent foundation. And this independent foundation helps to kind of ventilate the underneath of the house to dry the, to, to keep the wood dry. Um, yes. <laughs> and this is off-grid house. Uh, so we had to collect the solar uh, panel, uh, solar energy. But uh, if you uh, slant it 30 degrees, it's, it's going to be too high. So we uh, kept the one like a 10 to 2 um, slopes. And we could uh, reduce almost the one third of the fun, uh, amount of the, the concrete to reduce also life cycle carbon. Um, and also um, very concrete is uh, consume a lot of energy and also come from very far. So we tried to reduce the amount. And this uh, terrace has uh, kind of diagonal terraces underneath of the, the roof. So it's even raining day, they can ventilate um, diagonally. So also like to create the possibility to use the massive wood, not uh, laminated wood, uh, we made like a 2.73 meter by three point, uh, almost two uh, meters grid to reach the beams easily um, to the next. And with traditional construction method, the beams is not uh, at the same level. The beams on the beams so that it's never uh, falling down. And also it's sticking out so to, to make sure that it doesn't fall down. And all the joint is carved by hand. And also all the wood is the directly uh, come from the, the forest, forest reef near the Kanto Plateau. So like le around less than like uh, uh, yeah, 100 kilometer and drying naturally outside uh, for uh, almost one year. And the mild on the side, because of this machine, which is moving uh, and the cutting, uh, how we say, the machine is moving, so the wood is, doesn't need to move. So it doesn't require a, a lot of spaces. So this machine be, uh, makes the forestry so the wood directly which is also good that uh, it brings the money to them directly, not like all the um, intermediate company taking the money from them. So that's why we could kind of afford the traditional construction method. And also like comparing a uh, comparison of machinery drying and naturally dried is very different the state of the wood. So machine drying is like a dried fast, but so kills the, all the cell of the, the wood and also um, take off all the oils. So you see like small clocks, which uh, is by time it gets uh, uh, weaker. While natural drying, it's not dried completely, but like uh, still keeping the structure of the cell and the oils, so it's good for the moment too, and it's drying slowly, and get the. It's gonna be stronger by time. 
So this shape of the um, con uh, concrete foundation is for also reducing the amount of the um, concrete. And also we try to not use plastic seat to seal the um, uh, to seal the humidity. So we didn't use glass wool, which is like um, not so good to for the humidity and also air tightness, moisture proof sheet or plywood or, <laughs> or like forms or tapes, laminated timber. We use the cellulose fiber plaster on the wood and the moist um, and the solid timber and solid wood paneling for finishing. So all uh, kind of hygroscopic together to keep the wood healthy and also like air environment healthier for us. So this is a plaster on the wood. And as a whole like a trial, we could use uh, the life cycle, reduce life cycle carbon compar comparing like energy uh, saving normal house which is like saving the energy while operation, but we could uh, reduce it while, uh, during the production and also during the dis uh, disposal as well. So this is the result of the house. So it's <laughs> off-grid house, it has a Tesla, two Teslas. <laughs> it's like a very unbalanced one, which is like uh, very interesting. <laughs> also like a limited window because of the insulation and the inside is um, all uh, biodegradable materials also the kitchens and it has also stoves to burn the wood which we used for the construction and the creating um, uh, also relationship with the Mount Fuji <laughs> It's kind of, I don't know, um, ashes on the on, underneath of the site is from there. So the result is we use uh, this drawing as kind of our uh, showing our concept, uh, showing the construction idea, but also like energy and uh, rain uh, waters, the life and the uh, soil environment at the same level. So it's like working together, not only architecture, but not only the life, but the working like uh, intertwined together. So this is the last slide. It's showing this kind of idea of urban fungus. Uh, as our practice is also urban fungus uh, to eat this expired uh, materials in the city but also like uh, how uh, kind of repairing the network uh, which is uh, modernized, uh, forced to the grid or like uh, enclosed the other block boxes or uh, canalized and cutting through it which is not healthier and the putting together is our work. And also like architecture is like kind of a uh, mushroom which has a lot of network underneath of its shape uh, from the resources to the dis uh, disposal. So this is showing somehow our practice and also our understanding of architecture itself. So thank you. <laughs>
um, I... maybe we can maybe some of us have some questions yes I don't know do you yeah also you can criticize <laughs> <laughs> Ah, this is steel foundation, probably, yeah, this one, yeah. So this is steel foundation, which is like 16 centimeter. And it's not only foundation, it's soil uh, improvement to reinforce the, the soil. Soil is very weak, so we had to reach to the solid, solid ground, which is here. So this is the piles, and we use the piles directly to lift up the house. How deep is it? 14.5 meter, <laughs> so 15 meter almost. And I think it, this is like inner land, as I showed. Uh, it's quite inner land, so in this blue area, they put like 30 meter. And uh, always like a concrete cement milk, which is like a pollute, uh, pollute the soil environment. And also they can't take it off. Mm -hmm. So now in Ginza or in Honbashi in the center, there is no space to put the new piles for next construction. So this is a huge issue in Japan. When you, your own house in Tokyo, yes. when you're building in this uh, super dense area with your avant-garde ecological approach, yeah. how do your neighbors react and what is the impact on the environment of the neighbors and the city? That's a very good, <laughs> good, um, yeah, that's very good uh, question. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> 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 but some neighbor came um that they wanted to for us uh, because it's also the innovation and they asked asked us to inspect their house and the garden <laughs> oh, so some of them think it very interesting but some of neighbor come to us like to cut the trees <laughs> yeah because it's like invading a lot to the the street <laughs> They are not happy neither. So, and uh, and the city and the authorities do they support you with your approach or? Um, no, not specially, but they don't stop us. So, <laughs> until now, <laughs> we yeah. You showed the project with the fungus school. Ah, the two. Me of uh, last year's. Uh, Belgian pavillon at the yes. yeah. yeah. But they didn't get to the end of uh, the answer, I think. Mm -hmm. And I would like to hear your opinion if it's capable of being a future building material or is it more or less just an experiment for stools or uh, plates or things like that? What's your opinion on so we didn't know at that time what's happening. So of course we didn't have any, you know, we wanted to just try this strength and how it, how uh, strong is it? And it's quite strong. So like sitting is no problem and the paneling is no problem. The p problem is I think uh, after this exhibition, we store in the house in London and the mice came to eat <laughs> <laughs> or eat or like a bite and bring the, some materials to their home. So <laughs> this is like uh, made, made us a bit scary. Like if, the, if we use for the architectural element, like mice came to eat is, <laughs> we need like a future, uh, like further experiment, I think to check. <laughs> But of course, like the uh, this furniture, it doesn't. It's really, I think, possible. The problem is like uh, 
uh, now the molding is plastic. If you reuse it, it's no problem. And also it has to be dry in certain point. So it also consume some energy to dry it. <laughs> so it's, uh, I don't know uh, if it if we can use, but it's worth to test, I think. But was it sufficient to dry it in the sun, or did it need those uh, technical drying? The technical drying, I think we need it. Yes. Otherwise, mushrooms start to grow. You see this dot, dot like a brown one, is like where we uh, purse the holes to bring the oxygen in the mold. mold. So here, like uh, we see that like a uh, mushroom wants to come out, <laughs> but the temperature can be like uh, eighty degrees, so it's not so high. But still, if it's massive like this, we need like uh, three hours to dry. <laughs> this slide I add the, uh, after seeing in material library. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ah, yes. I think. Uh, uh, I think I uh, yeah, the larger scale, I think we have to, of course, change the methodology. Uh, we can't do like little by little or like, taking the risk. But I think uh, as we are doing taking the risk, if we can, if does it work, I think someone can copy for the bigger scale. So this is also one thing we can. Yeah, yeah, probably, yes. Also, like a bigger structure maybe need more, uh, I don't know, uh, because this biodegradable uh, buildings can be like a very, like, can be like a short cycle of like 50 to uh, 70 years, but bigger scale building can be more longer. I think, uh, and it has to be like a 200 or 300. Then like a finishing, inner finishing, we can do like a more biodegradable, shorter cycle um, materials. So it can be like coexist with two scales, I think. <laughs> but I think also it's my question, how does it? <laughs> Uh, goes to the bigger scale and I would like to try but also like someone else can try to <laughs> I don't understand the question about the um, if you kind of share the living house with mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. rooms on yeah. the upper floor yeah. and this corridor going around yeah. so do, when people sleep there they close the door they close the curtain and yeah. they sleep yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's internal ventilation in the middle. Yeah, they have air conditioner and uh, separate ventilation. So they have uh, exactly like the glass windows and the curtains, so they, they can cho choose the layer to close or keep the privacy too. And this is referred to Japanese house, like we have a corridor around the outside to protect the, the rooms. I like your drawings very much, also the conceptual drawings, which also show the construction and the process. How, how do you, like, when do you start, at which part of the um, construction phase or design phase you start with those drawings? This? Um, yeah, there was, yeah, for instance. This we draw later. How does the drawing kind of fuel your design process? How, you know, what kind of drawings are you using? 
how is it? Because it seems every every project has those the, the, those drawings mm -hmm. of in Japan with Athena Bowo and mm -hmm. this strong tradition of yeah. drawing. Yeah. So traditionally, uh, okay, it, we we do very classic uh, when we do the project like making model and the plan and the section and elevation. And this is like a, a very diff, uh, important tools for us. And this kind of uh, a communication drawing is we do afterwards. It also looks a little bit like a. Um what is Gebrauchsanweisung, like um, how to do drawing, yeah. How to a manual, do. like a manual somehow. Yeah, yeah. So this is like uh, to communicate with mm. people, so exactly how to do. Also, like uh, we are working a lot on, on site, so we decide on the site and we do like a kind of trial and error. So afterwards, we summarize sometimes like this, what we have done. One more question or, yeah, there is one. Yeah, this was the, like the two drawings confused me a bit. This one was the one with the bamboo, right? Yeah. And why do you stick it that deep in the ground? Is it to get water or like some, how does it improve the soil? Uh, so the bamboo uh, pipe, you yeah. mean. So this is like every two meter or 1.5 meter we insert. Uh, this is a methodology like a gardener developed uh, to improve the soil. So it's ensure that the water goes deeply. Uh, even the soil is very, uh, dead and is um, hard. And also oxygen goes uh, so this ensure for several years because it's gonna be um, bi degrade, yeah, biodegrade. So then, like uh, it, the soil is after several years, it's the soil is already improved. So it's for the beginning to accelerate the improvement. Because it was covered before. Yeah, it was covered before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, construction methods, uh, would you say that they are still alive? How deep had you dig to find these uh, old ways how to deal with wood uh, to, uh, to the re recover, bring those traditional construction methods uh, alive? Mm -hmm. Are they still? Mm -hmm still there? Or, or yeah, yeah. So the carpenter spills was this way. So we learned a lot from them. And there is a two type of uh, traditional construction method. One is like for the temples. <coughs> so these are the very skilled one, which is, uh, we called it uh, Miyadaiku. So it's very specialized uh, skills. But other is like uh, building the houses is traditional construction method. And this is a very simple one, which we can learn a lot from them. And they, the build, builder, like a uh, carpenter built this house that last I saw in the, uh, the, um, this one. They were like mid thirties. And so young people started to kind of recognize this uh, importance of traditional construction method. So we learned from them a lot because they are young and they are open and we could discuss. So, so we learned from them. <laughs> so um, in, in this project, you made like straight foundation. Yeah. Um, uh, were you able to uh, economize some or uh, because we did this one time as well in a project and in the end we have to use as much concrete as if we did a flat mm. uh, ground with concrete. 
Yeah, so we calculated the volume and it was like one third of the amount. Sorry? It's the, you do it mainly to protect the soil? Yeah, to coexist the soil and also reduce the concrete because this is seaside. So we couldn't use the steel foundation. Mm -hmm. And the stone foundation with two stories is uh, very complicated to do uh, in terms of the administrative uh, process. So we decided to use the concrete, but we wanted to minimize the amount. Mm -hmm. So footing is uh, minimized because of the slanted shape and also uh, we kind of cut it away where structurally we don't need. And this was very complicated because they could, in the law it's written that the foundation has to be continuous. And it's not continuous, so they said that this is not foundation. So we had to approve each number and <laughs> it took really long to in kind of uh, to prove as a structure to the <laughs> so but this is done by engineer of course but not us So we could also move a little bit to yes. the other side of the campus and continue to talk to the elephant bar, if you want. In um, after maybe you are interested in buying a book or copy <laughs> of book. Thank you so much Thank again. Thank you. For <laughs>